Extraordinary scenes at Stamford Bridge last night, which we'll come on to in a couple of moments' time after we've talked about some extraordinary scenes at Edgeley Park yesterday. In December 2005, Jim Gannon walked into Edgeley Park. He was a breath of fresh air. He took them from the brink of receivership, which is ironic, into League Two via the playoffs. Played over 400 games for them as a central defender. He really was the archetypal fans' favourite. He's still revered there. Unfortunately, as you know, a couple of weeks ago, the club were placed into administration, suffered a 10 point penalty as well, narrowly escaped relegation, and unfortunately, last night, the administration administrators decided to make the ever-popular Jim Gannon redundant, along with Peter Ward, his assistant, along with the most, the majority of the remaining uh, staff at Edgeley Park as well, so quite extraordinary scenes really. The players, some of the players were in yesterday morning having treatment. Jim said goodbye, I'll see you next week, have a good weekend, and you know, never the twain shall meet again really. It's quite an incredible um, situation, I've never seen anything like this happen before. What's going to happen at Edgeley Park? Well, a couple of weeks ago at one of the home games, they didn't have enough players to actually put on the bench, so the squad was already getting thin, and, he's, and Jim's done so well on a shoestring budget. You do wonder for the future of the long term future of the club, certainly. And if I was a gambling man, I'd be straight down to the bookies this morning with a big wedge on Stockport County, unfortunately, to be relegated probably by about Easter next season. The fans obviously have been having their say, haven't they? The fans have had their say. They organised a demonstration immediately, they heard the news, they turned up at Edgeley Park en masse, and here's what a few of them had to say. The loss of just have been in had a meeting with him, and he's not interested in people's lives or football fans. And when I told him the strength of the fans here, that when he came out of them offices tonight, that there would be a bit of a riot and he could be hung on Hardcastle Road, he said, where's Hardcastle Road? Hardcastle Road is here where we stood. He's not a stop they're not Stockport people. They don't appreciate how the fans are. They're not interested in people's lives. They're not interested in us people. All, all we need to know is where's the money gone? We've had the biggest season ticket sales in history, the biggest home gate since 1968. We've sold all these plays for millions. Where's the money gone? Nobody has come and said, where, where is it? Where's it gone? Yeah. Where's all the money gone? We want to know all those responsible for this mess now. Not one of them are here. Where's all your suits now? Who swan around, shaking hands and going boardrooms and have drinky winkies and all that. Is there any other sport that evokes such emotion? <laughs> not happy bunnies, really. I mean, that no, story not surprising. Will, that story will run and run, and we'll have more on it at 12 o'clock and 5 o'clock this evening. I think probably what people forget is just the amount of time and money that people do invest in a football club. Absolutely, and, you know, if, you, if you're born and bred in Edgeley and that, that's your one passion, you go and see your football club week in, week out. The summer, you know, they've had the biggest away following in League One this season. They really are well supported away from home, and, you know, fans do worry about the, the club. It's very important in some people's lives, and, that, you know, that depth of feeling was shown just there. Yeah, let's hope it gets sorted at Edgeley Park. Now then, talking about uh, being, things being <laughs> sorted, I was watching the uh, the Champions League semi-final last night. Just extraordinary, wasn't it? Unbelievable. Um, I must admit, I did jump out of my chair when Barcelona equalised, because a couple of months ago we did predict on, on these very same chairs you did. for Barcelona United final in Rome. That, that would be good. It'd be good for the neutral as well, but I think justice was served. I've never been too happy with the way Chelsea approached both legs home or away, but for Didier Drogba, I think that young man needs um, maybe a spell in an ice chamber just to cool down a little bit, and I think he will receive quite a lengthy European ban for his behaviour, which you spoke about so eloquently early on, which we can't repeat here. No, um, <laughs> and the Norwegian referee was obviously being scrutinised, a lot of people saying he wasn't up to the task last night. I mean, I, you know, there were four penalty claims. I think one was very blatant, the other maybe a bit dubious. Yeah, but as we saw with Down Fletcher the night before, referees yeah. make mistakes, they're only human, so that's taken the spotlight off Down Fletcher a little bit, so... Unlucky Chelsea, but I was grinning. OK. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm looking forward to the final now. If it would have been United-Chelsea, not so yeah. much. United-Barcelona, I think, will be a cracking final. Uh, let's move on to England. Uh, they, of course, were in action yesterday against the West Indies. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, the story of Ravi Bapari yesterday, Absolutely. Wasn't day it? one down at uh, Lords, the End Power Test Series. Pretty good uh, day for England, really. As Phil said, Ravi Bapari making 1-1-8 is still there this morning. Fidel Edwards for the visitors taking 4 for 53. The worrying sign were there early on. No, England slumped from 92 for 1 to 109 for 4. And the fielding, well, that was... England-esque, I think we shall say. They must have been watching us perform in the West Indies. But power was dropped on 76 and 100, but will resume at 11 o'clock on 118 today. So England just about edging day one. Another four days to go. You know what? I reckon we're with a chance of winning this one.
Yeah, good day for Lancashire as well. Great day for Lancashire as well. Some incredible bowling figures at uh, New Road where Lanks were playing yesterday. Glen Chapel took six for 34, Saj Mahmood four for 65 as Worcester was skittled out for 167. In reply, Lanks firmly in control, 172 for five. Mark Chilton will resume on 51, not out. Ably assisted by Stephen Croft's incredible knock of 43. So good news for Lanks. Worcester always tricky to beat at New Road, so it could be a good weekend for the cricket. Yeah, now after all the drama of the weekend with Stockport and Berry, it's a quick turnaround, isn't it? Because tonight sees the first semi finals. First uh, playoff semi finals, that's right, in League Two. Both uh, our teams in action. Let's take a quick look at the first one. Rochdale will host Gillingham, Dagnall, Lefondre, Kelsey, Stanton, Thorpe, Kennedy, and Toner have all been recalled to the squad after being rested for the final game of the league campaign. Simon Royce will replace Alan Julian, and Simon King is in for Mark Bentley for Gillingham. It's do or die tonight for Rochdale. I know the second leg is on. Sunday, but they really must put their mm. indifferent home form behind them. And if they don't go back to Gilling with at least a two goal cushion, it could be the end for them, I'm afraid. Yeah, it's a tough place <coughs> to go, isn't it? The, uh, the Priest Field. Um, Shrewsbury Berry. Shrewsbury the Berry, yeah. Different uh, prospect for Berry, really. They travelled to Shrewsbury tonight. They've got the, the better uh, side of the deal. Michael Jackson, he's not uh, in receivership. He's actually got a bad knee. He'll be missing for Shrewsbury. For Berry, Phil Jevons and John Welsh have extended their loan deal. Should they reach the playoff final, they will be eligible to play. Andy Bishop is likely to partner Glyn Hurst in attack. As we say, it's always better to play the first leg away from home. A draw there should, shoot, should suit Berry even. And I reckon they're the ones that are going to go through to the final and be in in League One next season. Michael Jackson used to play for my team, and whenever the PA <laughs> announcer always used to announce it at away grounds, you always used to get the away fans going, Shambo! <laughs> <laughs> and we used to have Robbie Williams in defence as well, which was kind of an interesting combination. I bet it was. Jacko and Robbie Williams together. Uh, right, talking sharks tonight. Talking sharks tonight, Philippe Saint Andre took the club a couple of years ago to the Zurich Premiership. They could never replicate that success, and quite wisely, he exercised an option to leave Edgeley Park for the sunny climbs South France and he's going to join Toulon during the summer. Most of the players are going to come with him as well. But he sat down and spoke to Talking Sharks. More of the interview tonight, but here's a taste of what you can expect to hear. Brian Kennedy rang me, it was in early days. Uh, I don't know where I say, please, Philip, don't sign anywhere. I want to meet you. And he came. I, we spoke about the, the project of sale. We spoke about a lot of things. And I came to sell and we, first year we won the Shield, second year we won the league. And I passed five years fantastic with, with in Manchester and with the Sell Sharks. It's fantastic day for sale. Tomorrow we'll celebrate with our supporters at 12 o'clock and uh, it will be a very long weekend, I can tell you. I want just to uh, wake up in the morning and when I shave in front of the glass, I can see me and say, I am honest with, with, my, uh, with my philosophy of life and about, about what, I, what I feel and what I think. I make also a lot of mistakes. It's important to try to not make twice the same mistake. But, you know, in, in this job, you learn each day. 